I could see this guy who'd got a gun to this woman's head. He was screaming and shouting, she was crying. I looked over my shoulder, there was about 15 firearms officers leaning over the garden wall with all sorts of weapons pointed at, at, at this guy. But I looked up at that window and I said to him, I can't even begin to imagine how scary it must be for you in there with all these firearms officers pointing guns at you. Tell me what's happened. It rocked him back on his feet. He just, he just wasn't expecting it. In my peripheral vision, I saw the barrels of guns just lowering a little bit as the firearms officers realised that, that that dynamic had changed. In some cases, a specially trained negotiator like Sergeant Nigel Taberner is called to the scene. You've got to be able to listen to people, and, and that's what we do. We, we try and get alongside them. We, we try to um, establish a, a bond with them, a, a trust, so that they feel like they can, they can talk to us. I'm going to lift the lid on hostage negotiation. By the time you leave today, you're not just going to know what hostage negotiators do, but you're going to know what they think and how they do it. And you're going to be able to use that in your workplaces, in your businesses, and in your homes. No matter how much it hurts, I was always going to tell him the truth because what I need to do is develop a relationship with this guy whereby he trusts me. Trust can take a long, long time. It can be hard work to get somebody to trust you. But if you blow it, it's gone. Listening is the negotiator's superpower. It's what makes us different. The number of incidents that I went to were after half an hour, 40 minutes, inexplicably, the person that I was negotiating with would say to me, can I put the knife down now? Can I come down now? Can, can we just end this now? And as I was walking down there, I'd say to them, if you don't mind me asking, why? Why did you change your mind? And the number of times that somebody said to me, because nobody has ever listened to me like that before. It's incredible. If I'm talking more than 20% of the time in a negotiation, I'm talking too much. Listen to find out what their values and beliefs are, because once we've established, once I've worked out what your values and beliefs are, and I can show you that what you're doing is not in accordance with them, then I can get you to change your behavior very quickly. Have a direction of travel in that negotiation. Know what you want to do, know what you want to say and what you want to sound like. But we practice and we prepare meticulously for that first 60 seconds. Wouldn't the world be a so much better place if we all listened just that little bit more? Wouldn't the people around us be so much more fulfilled if we listened that little bit more? Thank you for listening. Yeah.